So my presentation, as I said, is called What Anarchists Ignore is Killing Them. And it's going to be some bad news for most people here to hear. It's going to be a difficult presentation for the majority of the audience. I'm not here to be people's friend, folks. I'm here to tell uncomfortable truth. I will not pander to a childish, politically correct dynamic. I'm going to speak harsh reality to people. Truth remains the truth regardless of how it is delivered or communicated to the ignorant. Those who insist upon being baby-fed truth with soft and pleasant tones are under socially engineered mind control. I'm here to let you understand the causal factors of what is going on in our world if you are open to receive that information. So choose to ignore it at the peril of freedom itself. This is the actual condition of the vast majority of what people today call the anarchist movement. They have absolutely no idea of the real, genuine causal factors of the destruction of human freedom. So get as offended about that as you like. So just think about that. I traveled 2,200 miles to tell people that. Do you think I'm here motivated because of money or because of a desire to be liked or to be famous? Not interested in any of those things. The height of ignorance is believing that you already have it figured out when you actually do not. Epicetus said, it is impossible to begin to learn that which one thinks one already knows. You cannot fill a cup that is already full. This is what is known as the individual's teachability index. An individual's teachability index, or their ability to learn by way of being taught by someone else, is extremely dependent upon the open-mindedness or closed-mindedness of the individual being taught. Low teachability derives from arrogance and rigid skepticism, but also from naivete and gullibility. High teachability derives from a balance between healthy skepticism and an open-minded willingness to learn and change. As you could see, that bell curve in the middle is where people learn the most. That's where they are either a teacher or a student, and they are open-minded, but they are healthily skeptical. Now, here's where, through extensive research, and interaction with the general anarchist community, I find them to fall within the teachability bell curve, right about there, in the too cynical or too skeptical range. And that's why many of them don't get it. We're going to talk about the factors in their mindset that put them in that region of the teachability bell curve. This is the thesis for my entire presentation here today. Today's anarchist movement, so-called, cannot achieve its goal of a state of human freedom while remaining in its current aggregate mindset. The vast majority of today's so-called anarchists still do not recognize or understand the underlying causal factors for the human condition of slavery. Most modern anarchists pay lip service to freedom without ever becoming aware of the true natural governing dynamics which actually determine the level of freedom which human society will experience. They see the problems we face only from the level of the symptoms, in other words, the 3D realm, but they lack the required knowledge to accurately identify the true causes of those problems, which invariably lie in the aggregate consciousness of the human population. It's like a child who keeps touching the hot stove over and over again, but doesn't recognize the connection between them being burned and touching the hot stove. These next two slides are all about the actual problems within the anarchist movement. Most anarchists think the major problems which humanity faces are political or financial problems instead of spiritual problems rooted in consciousness. The two major factors that go hand in hand with that first statement are these. Most so-called anarchists do not understand anything about the world of the occult and think that it is not important to understand that world. And identical to that factor, most 
so-called anarchists do not understand what I refer to as natural law. Now, I've just hit you, thank you. I've just hit you with two phrases that you may have a mental definition of that is completely inaccurate from the working definition that I'm talking about those terms from. So, you must discard your pre-existing mental definitions of the terms the occult and natural law. Most people insist upon hearing what they want to hear or what they already believe regarding specific terms which carry a significantly different working definition within a framework of understanding compared to the mental definition that they already hold in their mind regarding those terms. You need to set aside your personal definition and listen to the working definitions I'm going to give regarding these terms. You can always count on me to be the asshole who gives you a reality check instead of telling you what you want to hear. So everybody here, or most people here, understand this already. You already get it because you get how definitions and words are misused. You try to help someone to understand anarchy, and what do they think anarchy means? Chaos, inevitably. But we all know here today, anarchy doesn't equal chaos. Anarchy is freedom, if you understand what anarchy really means. And of course, people here should know that anarchy comes from the Greek prefix an, meaning without or the absence of, and the Greek noun archon, meaning master or ruler. Anarchy does not mean without rules. It literally means without rulers. No rulers, no masters. Or as I like to say, no masters, no slaves. The working definition of occultism, as we will progress through this presentation, is this. The word occult is derived from the Latin occultus, meaning hidden. Occultism is the study of the hidden laws of nature, specifically those laws which are at work in the invisible, mental, spiritual domain, far more than those at work in the visible, physical world. Therefore, occultism involves the acceptance of a much wider worldview than that which is ordinarily taken by the everyday person. Occultists, then, may be defined as those who study all the laws of nature, both those that are readily seen and those which are much more difficult to see with the physical eyes or measuring instruments alone. The occult is hidden science, ladies and gentlemen, science that has been hidden from you to control you. Why is there so much of a resistance to understanding the occult? Here's some psychological reasons. There is a prevalence of atheism and scientific materialism in the anarchist community. This is why anarchists are very resistant to understanding this. There is left brain dominance and lack of spiritual development resulting from the modern outcome-based so-called education system. There is the belief the secular goals of power and money are the ultimate desires of the ruling class, and they want so much more than that, let me tell you. And there is a refusal to accept the existence of covert religion at work in the world, religion that you and most of the world know nothing about, yet this priest class is who is controlling this planet. Part of the occult is Satanism, and Satanism is something that's completely misunderstood. Satanism is misunderstood with, among people who think they understand occultism, let alone the average person. But certainly, the anarchist community is not very close to an understanding of what real-world Satanism is. Satanism is an ancient occult religion comprised of diverse, interconnected networks of worldwide adherence, at its ideological core, this religion postulates that knowledge of the human psyche and knowledge of the laws of the universe should be occulted and held only by a few human beings, constituting a priest class within their ranks. It is much more accurate to perceive Satanists and what I refer to as dark occultists in general as ancient master psychologists who hold and wield hidden knowledge in ways which exploit and enslave those who remain ignorant of that knowledge. Through the power differential they gain by way of manipulating those who remain in ignorance of this critical hidden knowledge, this small minority who are, quote, in the know, wish to permanently enslave the masses of humanity through mind control, the destruction of true spirituality, and effectively become God on earth. 
It is important to understand that contrary to popular belief, the overwhelming vast majority of Satanists do not worship an externalized deity known as Satan in the Christian tradition, but instead see Satanism as an ideological way of being in the world, and they view the ego-driven self as the god of their depraved religion. This is what Satanism really is, ladies and gentlemen, and I know because I am a former priest within this religion. I came out of this world of dark occultism because I had a moment in conscience, recognized that it was ultimately about permanent enslavement of humanity, and defected to the other side bringing their playbook with me. The problem is, is it's as they told me it would be, you'd bang your head against a concrete wall for the rest of your natural life until the day you die, trying to explain our religion to the general unwashed masses. And I've been doing this for 10 years, and people are 0% closer to understanding the realm of the occult and real Satanism. No closer, because of the resistance factors I'll be talking about. Anarchists in general and the general population do not understand what natural law is, and this is the problem that keeps humanity enslaved. So the working definition for natural law, natural law is a set of universal, inherent, objective, non-man-made, eternal, and immutable conditions which govern the consequences of behaviors of beings with the capacity for understanding the difference between harmful and non-harmful behavior. It is the binding conditions of behavior. We have free will, but we do not have the ability to escape the consequences of our free will world decisions that we take through our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. And natural law is the set of governing conditions, the governing dynamics that brings to us the result of our behavior. Natural law is not and has absolutely nothing to do with any of these things that I'm going to say here right now. It has nothing to do with Darwin's theories regarding macrobiological evolution. It has nothing to do with the so-called Darwinian survival of the fittest. It has nothing to do with the so-called law of the jungle, and it has nothing to do with the so-called quote-unquote natural order. Zero and nothing to do with those things. So if you have the idea that you can learn natural law by observing animals in the wilderness, you have no idea what I'm talking about by natural law. Get these notions out of your mind. Okay? That's not what natural law means, and this is because the word natural has also become obfuscated in our language. People don't even know where the word natural came from etymologically in human history. This is the etymological root of the word natural. The English word natural is etymologically derived from the ancient Egyptian word NTR, transliterated NTR in English, symbolized by this flag hieroglyph. It meant God. NTR in ancient Egyptian meant God. It was symbolized hieroglyphically as a simple stylized flag on a pole, which represented a force which was known to exist through its observable effects, but difficult or impossible to see with the eye. In other words, occulted or hidden from view. NTR was actually pronounced netcher almost identical, extremely close to the English pronunciation of nature, almost as if a, a southerner from the United States was pronouncing it. Let's go out and nature, okay? <laughs> the word natural, when we tack on the suffix al from many different root languages, meaning of, having to do with, related to, or from, the word natural clearly means etymologically of, from, having to do with, or relating to God. That is what the word natural means. That is all it ever has meant. When people think about that it means somehow animals behave, the Darwinian so-called theory of evolution, that is not what the word natural means, certainly not as I'm applying it in my work. We need to get that definition out of your head and you need to get this working definition into your head. Natural law has been known in many different times and traditions by many different names. It has also been called moral law, cosmic law, universal law, causality, or the law of cause and effect, consequentialism, or the laws of consequence, the law of karma, God's law, creation's law, conscience, or probably my favorite, common sense, 
which is what sadly has disappeared from this world. For people to really understand the depth of what natural law is, I highly recommend my eight and a half to nine hour presentation called Natural Law, the Real Law of Attraction and how to apply it in your life. You can find this seminar online for free at my website, whatonearthishappening.com. Please watch it in its entirety. You will greatly benefit from it. Very brief review of natural law. It is all about correct understanding of objective morality. This is what natural law is. It is understanding the difference between right behavior and wrong behavior. Right behavior is that behavior which is correct. It is based in truth. It is moral because actions which are in harmony with natural law do not result in harm to other sentient beings. This is the definition of the very term right as applied to behavior. Most people, most anarchists cannot give the definition of a right, unfortunately, the correct definition, which is an action that does not cause harm to other sentient beings. That is the definition of a right. And that's why we are losing our rights, because people don't, cannot even define what a right is. Conversely, wrong behavior is that which is incorrect in nature. It is not based in truth. It is immoral. Wrong actions are actions which are in opposition to natural law because they do result in harm to other sentient beings. And yes, the breakdown is quite simple. And yet, unfortunately, the vast majority of the human population cannot understand that simplicity and does not live their lives in harmony with it. Natural law is the only law that exists. All other laws are illusory. They are the product of a mind that is under mind control and hypnosis. Natural law is based upon principles and truth, whereas man's so-called law are based upon dogmatic beliefs. Natural law is inherent to creation, whereas man's law simply exists as constructs of mind. Natural law is harmonized with due to knowledge and understanding. Man's law is complied with due to fear of punishment. Natural law is universal. It exists and applies everywhere in the universe regardless of location. Man's law differs with location based upon the whim of legislators, which is called moral relativism, which is where most people are trapped as well. We're going to talk about that later. Natural law is eternal and immutable. It cannot be changed. It exists and applies forever. Cannot be changed regardless of what any being in the 3D universe does, ever. Man's law changes with time based upon the whim of legislators, moral relativism. There is one overarching ultimate law within the entire set of laws known as natural law, and that is the law of freedom, which is very simple. Freedom and morality are directly proportional. This is the underlying causal factor of the human condition, ladies and gentlemen. The aggregate amount of truth and morality present in the lives of the people of any given society is directly proportional to the amount of freedom and order in that society. And it is inversely proportional to the presence of chaos, tyranny, and slavery in that society. Sadly, the anarchist community still has not recognized this fundamental natural law. As aggregate morality increases, aggregate freedom increases. As aggregate morality declines, aggregate freedom declines. So, you only need to observe the result that humanity is receiving. Humanity is receiving as a result of its freedom being destroyed and going into deeper states of tyranny. So what does that mean about our aggregate morality? Is it increasing or on the wane? That's the key to creation's laws right there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm giving you the absolute deepest knowledge of the occult. This is the secret of all secret societies that they do not want you to understand. Moral relativism. Unfortunately, most anarchists still accept the ideology known as moral relativism. Moral relativism is the ideology that objective morality does not exist inherently to nature and that right and wrong are simply subjective constructs which human beings invent, which are changeable according to time, location, circumstance, or preference. A society that believes there is no objective difference between right and wrong, and that they may arbitrarily create or decide what right and wrong are for themselves, is a society that can never harmonize with natural law. Since the governing dynamics of human freedom are predicated upon the aggregate morality of a society, true freedom can never exist in a society that embraces moral relativism.
And I'm just going to share with you some social experiments that I've conducted upon hundreds of people and show you a few brief results here in these next couple slides. We asked many people in the social experiments I've done, are right and wrong objective or inherent to creation, or are they subjective or relative to human opinion? Now watch the similarity of these next few pie charts, ladies and gentlemen, and you'll see where I'm going with this. 67%, two-thirds of the human population, because we took a pretty decent size set for these results of a varied wide variety of types of people, and over two-thirds of them think that morality, that right and wrong are subjective and are relative. The two-thirds of the human population are moral relativists. And I'm telling you, the people we were talking to were probably of above average intelligence and above average conscience. And those are the numbers. We are far away from building a world rooted in real freedom. We asked them, is authority real and legitimate? 60% versus 40% said, yes, authority is absolutely real. And again, I'm going to say, because of the people who were even conducting this and who they knew, these are probably skewed numbers toward the positive, not toward the negative. It's probably much worse than this. Are people obligated to obey victimless so-called crime laws where there is no victim, no harm against another being? 63%, almost two-thirds of human beings say yes, the government has a right to punish you because you broke their arbitrary rule of right and wrong versus actually harmed another being. This is the mind control our society is under. Is government necessary to prevent chaos? Again, almost two-thirds of people, two out of three minimum. And again, I think these are highly positively skewed results. Said yes, we need government to protect us from an outbreak of chaos. And I, I would say, that the numbers for how many people are absolute moral relativists are probably much higher than this, and so these other numbers are actually much higher in the negative realm. Here's another problem that most anarchists are trapped in. They subscribe to atheism and quote-unquote scientific materialism, the very same ideologies which have driven and still drive Marxism, socialism, and communism. The most hardcore totalitarian ideologies on the face of the earth. And yet, the people who say they want real freedom don't want to understand the inherent laws of creation. They want to believe in their version of reality based in atheism and scientific materialism where there is no natural law and think they're going to develop freedom on the other side of that mental belief system. Good luck with that. There's a psychological schism in the brain that keeps most people away from truth. These are different forms of dialectics I'm going to be talking about. This is what mind control is rooted in. When, we, when you have chronic left brain dominance, the left hemisphere of the brain is a logical word processing part of the brain. When you have chronic left brain dominance, meaning most people who go into the purely logical centers of the brain and they don't have a holistic, a creative, and a nurturing side to their personality and their, their mentality, they go into chronic left brain imbalance. The symptoms of this are rigid skepticism, scientism, as I like to call it, because it's not real science. It's science as an arbiter of truth and whatever they say is, is reality. Atheism, solipsism, the idea that there is no such thing as truth. Some people who go too far into left brain uh, dynamics are solipsists. They get into moral relativism and believe there's no such thing as objective right and wrong. Social Darwinism, eugenics, and authoritarianism are also hallmarks of this imbalanced brain. Chronic right brain dominance is when people go off into woo-woo land and aren't rooted in the real world. They're too overly seeing the world through rose-colored glasses and are very right brain. And hallmarks of this condition are naivete, blind belief, religious extremism, also solipsism encroaches into that worldview, a feelings of unworthiness and self-loathing, becoming an order follower or a willing slave, thinking I'm the victim and there's nothing that I could do about it. You have the dominator, or the abuser on this side, and then you have the victim mentality on the other side. It's a dialectic that human beings are kept in to keep them enslaved. There's also a worldview schism within the ranks of most anarchists, okay? They take on a view of either randomness or determinism. The randomness worldview is that the universe is a grand cosmic accident, that there is no creator, there is no underlying intelligence in nature. Again, if you're not comfortable with the word God, I could care less. I'm talking about God in the sense of law, 
in the sense of there is an underlying dynamic that led to the creation of the laws that are at work in the universe. You're not comfortable with the word God? Use the term the underlying intelligence in nature or in creation. I don't care. I'm not here to tell you what God is. I'm here to explain that the laws of creation have observable effects. And if we don't learn those effects and thus learn those laws, we're going into deeper bondage. <laughs> Left brain worldview. The left brain worldview also puts people in the belief that there's no such thing as the spiritual, the moral, or natural law. That existence has no purpose other than to continue to exist. And these are the hallmarks of scientism, atheism, and totalitarianism. On the other side, the right brain imbalance, you have a deterministic worldview often. They're the nothing I can do worldview. I can do nothing to, to make, create change. God controls every event in creation in this worldview, so all occurrences are preordained. Free will is an illusion and does not exist. And since God controls everything, change is impossible. Action is ultimately meaningless. These are the hallmarks of religious extremism and what I call slave think. The truth lies in the middle, as it always does, in between the two dialectical extremes. There is a combination of a deterministic component to creation and a random component of creation. The deterministic component is natural law. The random component is our free will. We are gifted with free will to choose our behaviors, but we are not free to escape the consequences of those behaviors. So a lot of anarchists are stuck in the war in this dialectical worldview between atheism and religionism, and too many of them are choosing the side of the dialectic known as atheism as far as I'm concerned. Here's the left brain dominant atheist. His worldview characteristics are matter is primary. God or spirit is non-existent. The physical world is all there is. Only physical laws exist but there are no laws that govern behavioral consequence. I have anarchists in groups that I meet with telling me this all the time. Mark, I don't believe, I don't accept anything such as laws that bind behavior. I only accept the physical laws. Well, good luck with that. You live your life according to that and see where it gets you, okay? I'll continue to understand natural law and that my behaviors are governed by laws of consequence, whether I accept that, understand it, know it or not, whether you accept it or understand it or know it or not, our behaviors are governed by natural consequences built into the fabric of creation's laws. Another hallmark of this worldview is science, is so-called science is the arbiter of truth, and consciousness is either purely mechanical, just existing in, as electrical impulses in the brain, or is meaningless altogether. I've also had hundreds of so-called anarchists come up and tell me that you use the word consciousness and that's a meaningless term to me. I can't understand how anybody could expect to arrive at the truth of what is creating the human condition with that kind of worldview. The right brain dominant religionist, this is the other side of the dialectic. And this is what drives people into the left brain side of the dialectic toward atheism, especially in the anarchist community, because the religionists have just as absurd of a worldview. I'm not talking about religion here, folks. Religion is the problem with the world. I want to see all religion destroyed, okay? Especially the religions of government, the belief in authority, those are religions too, okay? We have to stop calling them politics and understand that those are religions. But the religionist worldview in this right brain dominance is spirit is primary. God or spirit is all powerful. The physical world is evil or should be ascetically shunned. God demands strict human obedience to his arbitrary and often conflicting rule set. And goals in the physical world should not be focused upon. Rather, we should focus on the promised afterlife with God. These are the hallmarks of the religionist mindset. Now, both of those are dialectical extremes, and the truth is never going to be found in a totally contrived and orchestrated dialectic. That dialectic exists only to keep people away from the truth, which is often the balancing point between those two worldviews, but does not subscribe to either one of them. And what the people who really understood natural law throughout human history and tried to teach it were, in general, were simple deists. I call this the center path of simple deism, okay? It is not a religion or a belief that God is this or that or wants this or that. And explaining God as he wants or he, she, or it wants arbitrary rules followed, okay? It's creation put into effect 
according to law, and then there are consequences to those laws, just like there are physical consequences. You walk off the edge of a cliff, you fall. You drop a heavy weight, it falls to the center of gravity toward the earth. Okay? Physical laws work like that, and non-physical or spiritual laws work the same way. You put an action into effect in, in the world, and then there is an effect you experience. There's a cause and effect relationship. Simple deism is the balanced worldview that far too often goes completely ignored in the dialectical war between atheism and religion. This worldview is that there is no separation between creator and creation. They are one and the same. Neither world takes precedence, the physical or the spiritual. They are one and the same. Evidence of the creator may be scientifically discovered and known through the observable effects of universal law. We understand the law by how it generates an effect when we take action. Neither the physical nor spiritual domains take precedence over the other. In essence, they are one and the same. The universe is a place of learning and spiritual growth built upon law for the benefit of all. And natural law behavioral consequences are in place for our maximum evolutionary progress. They are not here to punish us or to control us. They are here to help us evolve and progress in consciousness. <laughs> deism. Both de simple deism. Now, again, there are other flavors and variants of deism that I'm not subscribing to or promoting. Simple deism and natural law were put forward in the Declaration of Independence. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. An entitlement is a birthright that we have as a result of our being born into creation from the universe. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, in other words, common sense knowledge, that all men are created equal under universal law. Under natural law, we are equal. We are not all the same in our capabilities and our attributes and characteristics, but we are all equal under natural law, meaning that as one person has rights, everyone has rights. Rights are the same for all, and rights should not be violated for any, okay? No one has special rights to violate other people's rights. This is what being created equal means. And that they are endowed, an endowment, again, a birthright of creation, by their creator with certain unalienable rights, rights which, which are inherent to creation and can never be separated from the sovereign individual. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Unfortunately, they left out property. Most anarchists, quote unquote, do not understand, accept, or apply the trivium process of truth discovery, or in other words, the real scientific method. Most anarchists have never even heard of the trivium process of truth discovery. Why? Because it was removed from the outcome-based indoctrination system called modern public education. The word trivium is derived from the Latin numeral tres tria, or three, and the Latin noun via, meaning road, path, or way. It is the threefold path to understanding the truth. In the classical sense, the trivium was called grammar, logic, and rhetoric. These are the three steps or phases of the scientific methodical process of truth discovery. In the esoteric sense, which is the sense that I teach the trivium from, it is called knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And in the modern sense, it is looked at as uh, you would in any computing workflow, input, processing, and output. One of the primary reasons most people in modern times cannot think and reason at a logical and philosophical level is due to the removal of the trivium truth discovery process from modern outcome-based so-called education systems. This is how the trivium actually applies in the real natural world, and our reality is built upon the trivium, believe it or not. So we start down here at the bottom, available information, knowledge. Okay, this constitutes all potential forms of data that may be gathered, processed, understood, and acted upon by individuals. So we either have knowledge or we have a lack of knowledge that's called ignorance. There are decision-making processes that then take place within the individual based on that knowledge. So this is processing of available information which takes place within the human mind and becomes the life choices of each individual. So this is what we do with the knowledge. We process it in the mind and we come to an understanding of it. Then what do we do with it? We act upon it. 
So this is the wisdom stage of the trivium. Human behavior, each individual's behavior is based upon the quality of their decision-making processes, which in turn are based upon the quality of their available information. That is why the occultists of this world must control information that people get to see, hear, read, and think about and discuss. If you control it from any other level, it's not going to do you much good. You have to control it from the base level of knowledge. Hence, hidden laws of nature, hidden science, hidden knowledge. That's the world of the occult. This is the three-step process that then generates our reality. We get the generated result based on how we behave. Manifested reality, the quality of the condition which manifests in any society is based upon the aggregate quality of behavior within that society. Will we generate order and freedom or will we generate chaos and tyranny? That's how the trivium works in our lives. Now, here's another hard thing for most people here and throughout the world who call themselves anarchists to swallow. Most anarchists believe that monetary gain is the only legitimate motivating factor for human behavior. And say what you will about that statement, but I find it to be invariably true amongst the anarchist community anywhere I travel, anywhere I go. And this is a fundamental flaw in thinking because if you're motivational force in your life is simply to profit from other beings to serve yourself, you do not understand what the primary motivating factor for behavior needs to be, which is to simply align it with that which is right and do it for the purpose that it is the right thing to do. I liken it to soldiers in a trench fighting against a vicious enemy coming at them to take their lives. And one soldier goes to the other soldier and puts his hand out and says, fuck you, pay me first. Think about this. We're in a war for our freedom. Payment is required? People think payment, money is the important motivating factor? Our freedom is at stake. Our souls are at stake. It goes far beyond even freedom. If that's going to be the motivating factor for behavior, good luck to what you create on the other side of that. Because most anarchists, unfortunately, their religion is money. I'll go farther than saying that most anarchists' religion is money. It's their God. For most anarchists, money is their God. This is a religion that needs to be broken down just as much as the belief in authority. And it's going to be a lot harder to break down the belief in this religion because it is way more solidly entrenched in the human mind than even the belief in authority is. I have to laugh at all the infighting between all the anarchist factions. It gives me a chuckle, okay? Because all anarchy means is no masters, no slaves no rulers. Yet we have all these different variations and breakdowns, and here's why. All of them want something different for themselves for personal reasons. They don't want alignment with natural law because it's the right way to behave. It's the right way to think, feel, and behave. They want things for themselves. So you have, you know, the capitalists saying, I want more Bitcoin, the communists, I want free stuff. I want to smash the patriarchy. Uh, I want to destroy cis scum. I want to be, you know, I want to destroy technology. All these different anarcho dash factions. There's only one real form of anarchy. It's true freedom based in right action under natural law. It's the only real anarchy that is and ever will be. This is, these are all just more dialectics to divide and conquer people. That's all they are, folks. You know, the real great work is understanding the causal dynamics in nature. Understanding how right and wrong are objective to creation, are inherent in creation, and we have to align our behavior to them. And this is the great work that I have been trying to do to communicate to people for the last 10 years. My main website, whatonearthishappening.com. See, here's the, the main thing 
throughout the world, people still haven't come to an understanding of. They always want to treat the effects. Once the effects are manifested, it's too late. You messed up at the causal level. And I see all the anarchists trying to put band-aids on self-inflicted wounds. They're not getting down to the causal factors of the problem that humanity is facing. So they're trapped in the plane of effects, as this is called in the world of the occult. Manifested realities which form because of their causes. They already happened because of the causal factors that generated the problem. There is no power to affect change in this plane of effects. But unfortunately, this is where human consciousness is trapped. We have to move our consciousness. We need a shift, a fundamental shift in awareness, a paradigm shift in our consciousness to understanding the causal factors. We have to move to the plane of causality, the why that underlies and precedes the manifested result. All power to affect change lies here. That's where our consciousness has to go. I liken it to the psychological problem of cutting, which comes from feelings of unworthiness and self-loathing and guilt and shame. It's a very, very sad problem that a lot of young people unfortunately experience and they take razor blades and they cut themselves. And what I feel the anarchist community and largely the whole world is doing is they're screaming out, we need more band-aids. Get to the manufacturer of more band-aids, more gauze, more bandages, more salves, more ointments, more band-aids. And they don't understand. You'll never solve that problem from that level, ever. Because it's not a physical problem. It's a psychological problem. It's a problem rooted in spirit. It's not a problem rooted in the physical reality. You have to go to the cause and treat the problem from that level, from the, from the level of causality. Then the negative consequential result will not manifest if it is treated from that level. Keep treating it from the level of effects. Good luck. See, here's, here's the thing I find within the anarchist community, unfortunately. Now, and again, I want to make a statement here. I'm not talking a blanket statement. Okay? Much of, some of the anarchist community does understand these principles. But I would say the vast majority do not, sadly. So I'm not making a blanket statement. I, I, I think you'll notice, I, throughout the presentation, I use the word most in almost all the slides. Most anarchists do not understand these things. Some, yes, some do. Some understand it with great detail and depth, and I'm very happy to see that. But I'm talking about the vast majority don't have a grasp on these dynamics because they're, th they're thinking that you could just want the world to change through the effects level, the plane of effects, and it doesn't work that way, okay? They want to stay within their rigid worldview and mindset and still have the results that they want on the other side, and reality doesn't work that way, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, many of us wish that it would, but that's not how it really works. See, it's like the politician saying to the throngs of believers, who wants change? That they are all too ready to promise them. And everybody raises their hand. But then when the question is posed, who wants to change? Meaning, who wants to change their thoughts, their emotions, and their actions, and align them to something that is really going to generate the result that you say you want on the other side, then all the hands and heads go down. You know? Thinking that you're going to treat this problem from the level of physical effects or money or politics is like watching a movie that you don't like that is already made and playing on a screen and screaming and cursing and banging your fist up against the screen saying, ah, I don't want this movie to change. Well, it's already filmed, edited, and put out into production and playing through the projector. You are not going to change it at that level. You have to start at the causal level in order to create that change. So this is how I see most anarchists in their behavior. They don't understand the causal factors, yet they're yelling at the top of their lungs that they want to change, that they want to see manifest on the screen of reality. And unfortunately, that is not how the laws of manifestation work in this realm. They do not work that way. The people who are only halfway there are lacking a ton of knowledge and yet they think they have all the knowledge that they need, and they do not. And I'll tell you something, the occult societies, the dark occult societies throughout this world work 24-7 to make sure information like this does not reach your eyes and ears. Don't help them by refusing to look into it on your own.
Buddha once said there are only two mistakes that one can make on the path to truth, not starting and not going all the way. Well, most of us here have most certainly started, but I would say a very small percent have gone all the way to the truth. That's what I'm here to encourage and attempt to inspire you to do. You need to go much further in your understanding of how the laws of manifestation really work. Then you'll go all the way to truth, and then you'll become a very effective agent for positive change in this world. Ladies and gentlemen, what I've done here today is actually give you the keys to all the locks, to all the doors, and the big key to the big cage that we are all in together. Now, what you will do with them is up to you. Thank you so much for your kind attention.